Hey everybody, so based off of a request, today we're going to be talking about Torricelli's trumpet. No, not that type of trumpet, a mathematical trumpet. What thinks a mathematical trumpet? Okay, all joking aside, we're going to spend the first half of the video describing what Torricelli's trumpet is, but, and then we're going to spend the second half talking about why it makes sense. Essentially what we've done here is we've taken a graph, the 1 over x, and we've rotated around the x-axis making a trumpet shape. What makes this shape so special is that it has infinite surface area but a finite volume, and we can prove this using calculus. So essentially the way we find a surface area is we take the circumference, which can be represented by 2 pi r, and we add an infinite amount of circumferences from 1 all the way to infinity. So what we can do is we can pull out the 2 pi using our knowledge of integral rules, and then we can rewrite r as 1 over x, because as you can see the radius will always be the height and it just gets smaller and smaller, it's represented by 1 over x. So now what we have is surface area is equal to 2 pi the ln of x from 1 to infinity because the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So what we can now do is we can plug in 1 in infinity and we'll notice that 1 goes to 0, but our upper bound still goes to infinity. So then we can conclude that the surface area of this graph is infinite. Well you see, I guess that makes sense because if you're going on for infinity, of course it's going to be infinite. But the volume is finite. What's up with that? So here we're going to be doing a similar thing. We're going to be taking an area of any given circle, and we're going to be integrating it from 1 to infinity. We're going to be adding up an infinite amount of circles. Again, using our knowledge of integrals to simplify. Although this time I'm going to add a step and write it in terms of a negative power. And so we can take the antiderivative of negative 2, which gives us minus x to the minus first power. Because remember, this goes down to minus 2, and then it crosses out with the minus 1 here. So here we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we're going to plug in our bounds. And then we'll notice that we get 1 over infinity. And at first this is weird, but 1 over infinity is going to be 0 because it gets so infinitely small that it has no real value. Then we're going to notice the double negative here, leaving us with just pi. Wait, so this cone has a volume of pi, but its surface area of infinity? What's going on here? Well, I think the best way of understanding this is understanding what happens when two things come closer to each other. So that concept doesn't make sense at first, so we're going to draw it out on a line. We have a green ray and a red light ray, and a ray goes on forever. So never, we can say that the never. length of both of these rays are infinite, but one thing that we'll notice is that the distance between them gets continuously smaller as we approach infinity, and they're eventually going to approach zero because they're both approaching the asymptote of the black line. And I think the reason this is hard to conceptualize is because when we think that things are approaching each other, we think that they're going to get close, but they're never going to touch. But when you get into infinity, they are going to touch, and it's a hard concept to understand. One of the best ways to explain this is with this terrible frog drawing. Essentially, we're going to have the idea that this frog will always jump halfway to his destination on the other side of his line. So he's going to go from this point to this point, but then he's only going to go halfway, so he's going to go here. And then he's going to go here, then he's going to go here, and it goes on and on and on. And one thing you'll notice is always halfway, he's never approaching the place that he's aiming for. So you're going to say he's never going to get there. Well, because he's a frog, you're right, he is never going to get there. But in a theoretical world where you can hit infinity, he will get there. So if he's jumping halfway each time, you're going to be inclined to say that adding an infinite amount of jumps together is about to. It's very close to two, but that's not correct the distance is equal to 2. Because when you're logically thinking through these things, you're thinking of it in terms of counting numbers. You're counting how close you get. But infinity is not a counting number. Infinity is a concept that's greater than any counting number. So the biggest counting number that you could think of will get infinitely close to it, yes. But infinity transcends that. It's a concept that makes these equal to their value. So when we're talking about Gabriel's horn, we can think that all the sides are getting super close to each other, so the volume will eventually go to zero, and we can actually count the volume. But the surface area never gets closer to itself. But the surface area never gets closer to a certain point like the volume. The surface area will continue going on and on and on. And that's going to be why it's an infinite. So if you think of the, like paper, paper is generally not considered to have a significant volume. Obviously, because it's a material in this world, it's going to have a volume. But compared to everything else, let's just say it doesn't have a volume. The reason it's so easy to consider consider paper as having no volume is because volume is represented by length times width times height. And when you're missing a height, it's going to be equal to zero because no matter how much surface area you have, you're never going to be able to create height out of no height. All of the sides of the horn will continue on for infinity. However, they're going to get so close to each other that there's no distance between them. And that's why the volume will eventually go to zero. So the idea of limiting dimensions is not just for surface area and volume, but you can also use it for distance and area. And so what I'm taking what I wrote here is a negative ln of x graph. Then over here I took the antiderivative 
of the ln of x, which is minus x ln of x plus x, reaches infinity. However, I took the, I used Lipidel's rule to take the limit as x approaches zero, and I got x is equal to minus x, and in this case that would be zero. So therefore, when we're taking the area from zero to two, we just need to plug in two to this equation, and that should give us the right answer. So what I've written here is a general distance formula. And so what we can do now is we can just plug in some numbers. Just remember, this is the negative ln of x, the derivative of that is negative 1 over x, and the negative 1 over x squared can be represented by that. Because it's such a complex equation, I'm just going to type in my calculator from the bounds of 0 to 2, and then we realize that it doesn't exist. Why? Well, it's quite simply, this line has an infinite amount of length, but it gets so close to here that we can actually count the area. And it's the same idea with the cone. Well, initially kind of a complicated idea, this translates over very easily to Gabriel's horn, proving that you can have a finite volume of an infinite surface area. Thank you for watching, I hope this cleared up some confusion, and I'd love it if you could come back later.